folks, it's been a little bit since I've actually like sat in my beauty room to film. <laughs> Because my last two videos that I filmed have been downstairs in my streaming room in front of my computer. If you haven't checked those videos out, please check them out. I got a link in a card. I did a palette redesign as well as a Sims video. So if you haven't seen those, check them out, please. Ha! <sighs> Today's video, I want to do a little bit of a rant because there's been some things happening on the internet lately that, um, to put it lightly, is concerning. I feel like most of it is attributed to family channels. <laughs> and the toxic culture, parasocial relationship culture around family channels. So I don't know if anybody's noticed, but like a lot of people have been having babies this year. Like a lot of influencers and YouTubers have gotten pregnant and had babies this year. And I'm not super interested in like pregnancy and baby content. I'm just, I'm just not interested in watching it regardless of the person. I'm excited for people and I'm happy for people if that's what they've been trying to do like so excited for people. I just don't watch the content really after the fact. And there's been a like concerning number of people who um, have been overly invasive and overly nosy and entitled to information about influencers' babies. One influencer in particular decided that she wanted to keep all the information about her kid, the sex, picture, name, everything off the internet. And honestly, mad respect to her. I wish more people did this because honestly, I get kind of uncomfy when anybody overshares things about their newborn on the internet because like I said, family channels have made it way too easy for people to make money from exploiting their kid. So it just, in my brain, it goes down that slippery slope. So I just get uncomfortable. What I've come to find out since I don't really watch much of the content around babies and pregnancy and stuff. Um, so I wasn't like privy to all the information that they were sharing. People were becoming growingly entitled to know stuff about her baby to the point where I saw one particular tweet from someone saying that she brought us on her pregnancy journey. Now I deserve to know about the, about the kid, which is so fucking bonkers. First off, nobody, no stranger is entitled to know anything about a baby, a stranger's baby. If an influencer decides not to share that information, they don't have to. The attitude that I saw from people who were shaming this person for deciding to keep this private and for accidentally saying things on a live stream when she didn't mean to and then had to take it down. And people were like sharing things on Reddit. People were having to like report the accounts and report the post because it's like, what would compel you to dig deep <laughs> to stalk a newborn? There's a difference between sharing information about your own body, pregnancy, journey, the whole process, because that's still your body. Like if somebody chooses to make videos and share things about their pregnancy, which honestly I think is a good thing, especially if somebody has an irregular pregnancy or they have valuable information that might be comforting to some people, I think it's a good thing. And at that point, it's still the pregnant person. It is still their body and it is still their body autonomy to share whatever they like with the internet. Now, once that kid is born, once that baby has popped out, that's a whole new person and a whole new uh, human that gets to decide at one point or another if they want to share themselves with the internet. It's a question of autonomy. And it's so bizarre how people are treating newborns like any other sort of, I don't know, new thing in an influencer's life. It's like, if somebody buys a new car, it's like, oh, I wanna see all the new car. Or if somebody like moves and they wanna see their new office space, or if somebody got a pet, like, yeah, obviously I would love to see people's pets. I love pets. If, if you got a puppy, of course, share all the things about the puppies. I love it. But it's a baby that, has currently no ability to consent to any of it. So to shame influencers for choosing not to exploit their child on the internet at all is very alarming. Dare I say, feeling like a fucking dystopian nightmare. The more and more I think about the way that the internet has changed over the 17 years since I have had a social media account, I joined MySpace when I was 15 and it was 17 years ago. My mom was even like worried about me joining MySpace at the time. And she was like, don't talk to strangers. Like don't share information you don't want out there. Like my dad still gets mad when I curse on the internet. So that was like simple times. And that brings me back to family channels. <laughs> Oh, 
Whenever somebody talks about like the worst channel on YouTube, I always jump to whatever family channel is, is in the middle of a scandal at a moment. Whether it's the Ace family or the LeBrant family. One of them, they're the two biggest I can think of, but there's so many more family channels that profit massively off of their cute kids and they're exploiting their kids on the internet for money. Which is, again, if I told my mom about the state of the internet now, she'd be like, this is, she wouldn't even know what Black Mirror is. But if she knew what Black Mirror was, she'd be like, why is this like an episode of Black Mirror? <sighs> if she did, that's what she would think. But because of family channels and because of people like the LeBrant family making Instagram accounts for their unborn child, for people to follow that they're running themselves to get ad money from an Instagram account of their newborn child, like, that's, that's where we're at. That's where YouTube's at. That's where the state of the internet is. And that's where the state of family vlogging is. And they write captions from the perspective of the new babies. It's just very weird. It's very weird. It's very, very weird. And because of this oversharing and because of this expectation audiences now have of these family channels that, oh, like there's a new kid, they're gonna share everything about that kid. You know, they're brought in to their entire life. They're made to feel like they're family or they're friends. Like these family channels make their subscribers feel like that they're, they're a part of their family when they're not. Anytime I see channels that like maybe don't normally post family vlogging content and then like somebody gets pregnant and then they like start making videos about that, the algorithm favors those videos way more than their regular content. If you ever look at like somebody's channel and you look at their views, they're like, no wonder they want to keep making videos about that because the freaking views are crazy. The ad money must be great. So YouTube is also to blame for this because it's like the algorithm shouldn't favor, shouldn't favor videos with kids as the subject. Cause like they can't advertise to kids. There shouldn't be kids on the internet and kids can't consent but when you're like a newborn, when you're an infant, you have no fucking clue what's happening. I mean, I've made videos before talking about how much I hate family channels. And that was like right around when the Daddy 5 stuff was happening, where the channel was not only exploiting their children, but like actually filming, like abusing their kids, like physically abusing their children on a channel. And the videos were getting viral. And thankfully YouTube banned them. They no longer have YouTube careers. I really hope those kids are okay. The shit they went through was um, severe. So these fam, back to these family channels. I'm like, I'm veering off course. They're I just have so many thoughts about this that aren't particularly linear because I don't know, I'm a 32 year old person and I don't have any kids, but I have a lot of friends who have kids and a lot of friends who are having kids or deciding to have kids or getting ready to have kids. It's like, I'm at that age where that's happening. So I'm seeing my peers now starting to raise the next generation of people. And it kind of scares me with the state of social media and with how much kids just put themselves out there online all the time. Like whether it's TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat. It makes me worried seeing the rise of family channels and the way that they can monetize their videos and the way that they can exploit the algorithm and exploit their children for views and for money. It's concerning how people now, because of that, because of the rise in family channels, expect that level of, of openness from many other influencers and expect that get to the point where they're like DMing influencers. Another example, somebody was more open about their kid and more open about the pregnancy and, and talked a lot more on YouTube about it, but still was getting messages from people wanting more and wanting to know more and getting uncomfortably nosy about their child. And that's weird. Whether the person is being nefarious and they have ulterior motives, or if they just really feel so connected to that person where they have the audacity to message them and direct message them, private message them, asking them more invasive questions about their newborn child. And that's weird. When somebody signs up to be an influencer and they decide to put themselves out there and share information online and, and post videos and bring the YouTube audience into their life in some way, 
that's their choice and that's their decision and that's their job. And there is some level of expectation that people are gonna be fucking nosy about your life. But that kind of comes with the territory of being an influencer. But the fact that people are getting that way about their babies is so gross. Like it's, it's just gross. Like it's just gross how people are feeling entitled to that information because of some arbitrary thing like, oh, we watched videos about you being pregnant. So now we deserve to know everything about that baby because we gave you the views and you made money off of our views about your pregnancy. So then now we need to know everything about it after the fact. What? Slow the fuck down. Thankfully, the person on Twitter that I saw posting like that point specifically, almost all the responses were like, what the hell is wrong with you? That's weird. That is wrong to expect a YouTuber and to expect a stranger, because that's what they are, expect a stranger to subject their child to the vitriol that is spewed on the internet on a daily basis. Like it's one thing to like wish for that and be like, oh, I wish I knew the kid's name because I got to watch all these videos and like, I would love to know because I mean, everybody wants to share in everybody else's joy. Like that's what it is. It's like they're sharing their joy with you and you would like to share more of that joy. You would like to be a part of more of that joy. Like that is, that is a valid feeling to have, but the difference between wishful thinking and invading somebody's privacy is whether or not you say something to that person in a direct message, in a tweet that's very aggressive. There's a difference. I already, as a 32 year old, childless person, I already feel like a baseline level of anxiety about my own privacy on the internet. And I don't even have any kids. Like it's just me and Josh, you know, I already feel this base level kind of paranoia about privacy because you kind of have to, like you have to be nervous and you have to be thorough and you have to be careful. But I can only imagine how much more anxiety somebody has to feel about that privacy and about that barrier on the internet when you have a kid. It's not just you and your significant other or you and your sibling. Like it's a baby that you're caring for and you are responsible for keeping them alive. That's already tough, stressful, tiring, exhausting. And for them to also have to deal with people being nosy on the internet, alarming, frankly. And because so many of these family channels have blurred that line, there are no lines because of people like mommy bloggers who share everything about their kid's puberty to the point that their kid is begging and pleading their mother to not post anything on her blog anymore. Like that was a story I read a few years ago about this poor girl, but this poor teenage girl whose mom shared everything on her mommy blog. And the kid was having like all of her dirty laundry aired out on the internet for people to read. All about her puberty, about her periods, about everything. And that's fucked up. Like that's terrible for people to be so short-sighted and so narrow-minded to think that like, this is the only way that I can make content and that I can make money on the internet. That shouldn't be your first priority. Your first priority should be, how am I going to protect my child? And when people shame influencers for choosing to protect their child at all costs, that can ruin what is otherwise a wonderful time for new parents. Or you know that point where like, say you work, work a retail job, right? Or work customer service or work at a restaurant, work with people and 95% of your customers, 99% of your customers are wonderful that day. You have great experiences, you get good tips, having a good day, you had a good work day. And then you have one bad person, you have one bad customer that can ruin your whole day because you remember the bad memories, you remember the negative interactions more, unfortunately. Negative interactions can negate so many positive ones. So for somebody to be in a time that should be I mean, it's stressful and tiring, don't get me wrong, but like a time that should be a very joyous and wonderful time, like being a new parent and having a new baby that they brought into the world, like that, when that's something that you've been trying to do and when that's something that you want, when you have a healthy baby and a healthy pregnancy, like that's gonna be a good time for you. And for something as stupid and as petty as like internet people, being nosy and, and invasive and weird and creepy, that's just gonna put a damper on so many things. That would taint so many memories 
in so many days, so many times. I cannot, I truly cannot imagine like how anybody would feel after that line was crossed. Cause that's, ju that's just a line you don't cross. Like you don't cross that line. And to think that so many channels on YouTube make bank and have now shown to their audiences that like, oh, there is no line. We're putting it all out there. Putting that attitude out to millions of people is dangerous. Like it's dangerous for children. It's dangerous for the other influencers who decide not to do that. I mean, it's dangerous for the people watching because they're gonna grow up or they're gonna see that this is a fine attitude to have, or they're gonna think that this is normal. Oh, LeBrant family, they share this about their kid. Why don't other people share that? I don't know, because it's their own life and they get to choose to do what they want with it. <sighs> oh boy. Like I said, this was kind of a non-linear rant thing of just feelings I've been feeling lately about privacy and invading people's privacy. And I've seen a couple people, a couple influencers talk about just privacy in general. And I'm glad that it's something that people are talking about more now because it's something where lines have been so blurred and it's something that I feel like people should kind of rein in a little bit. Like, I don't know, setting boundaries <laughs> is very important. <sighs> Kids are off limits. They should be. And fuck family channels for changing that. Fuck family channels for making kids fair game. Cause that's weird. It's weird. I am so happy that we didn't have social media besides MySpace until I graduated high school because like, oh, I am thankful that I was a teenager in the early 2000s. Like if I was a teenager right now dealing with like TikTok and Twitter as a teenager in 2021, I would be a mess. If you're a teenager right now, um, please uh, take care of yourself online. Um, please do not share everything all the time because not everybody needs a little bit of everything all of the time. Anyway, um, actually I'll make today's song of the day, Welcome to the Internet by Bo Burnham from his special Inside that uh, I will tell you when I watched it, I cried. It was one of those comedy specials. I say comedy specials because there's like, it's funny because it's true. Um, and Welcome to the Internet is like a very good example of that because um, I mean, Bo grew up on the internet well, grew from his adolescence to now on the internet because he's like the same age as I am. But yeah, welcome to the internet from Bo Burnham is your song of the day and listen to the lyrics because it's it's painfully accurate. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, let's start a discussion in the comments below. If you want to see more of my content, please subscribe. Sometimes I post rants, sometimes I uh, do Sims videos, sometimes I roast bad makeup releases, and sometimes I make up my own. Uh, yeah, subscribe if you would be so inclined. Uh, and then hit the bell notification to get notified when I upload new videos. It is Tuesdays and Fridays currently, usually. And if you wanna follow me anywhere on social media, my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Twitch will all be in the description as well. I'm just imagining the like teenagers in 10 years who are just gonna be so fucking resentful of their family vlogging parents. I'm just waiting for that to happen because my God, YouTube likes to say that they're protecting kids by like not putting ads in videos uh, where kids are the subject and turning off comments in videos with kids. Hey, maybe don't like let family channels like post so much fucking content a week um, where it's proving that like the kids are working too much. Maybe don't like favor family channels and the algorithm. Maybe that should be a thing that YouTube does to protect children besides just turning off comments. Have a good weekend, everyone. And uh, if you're watching this on Saturday, I'll be streaming live on Twitch tonight. I'm going to be playing probably The Sims. It's what I've been doing mostly. Check me out there if you wanna see more of me before Tuesday and I will see you all in my next video on Tuesday. <laughs> Bye.